Dr. George Estabrooks was a Canadian who spent three years at Oxford as a Rhodes Scholar, received a doctorate in 1926 from Harvard, and was prominent in the American hypnosis scene from the 1920s to the 1970s, head of Colgate University's Department of Psychology, published 60 articles and several books on hypnosis. Dr. Expert Estabrook's expertise was used by both the OSS, the precursor to the CIA, and the FBI. As soon as the OSS began, George Estabrooks started traveling to Washington, D.C. Estabrooks viewed persons who were susceptible to hypnosis, 20% of the general population, as fodder for any hypnotist with a notion of a higher purpose, be it research, profit, patriotism, or his own personal entertainment. This attitude echoed that of another prominent hypnotist, Dr. Cook, who in 1927 advised beginning hypnotists to develop a stable of hypnotic subjects. Quote, First secure a good subject and practice upon him until you can hypnotize him with absolutely no difficulty, and then place him in the profound somnambulistic amnesic stages of hypnosis. Next, secure two or three more subjects and develop them, and thus gradually add to the number. The hypnotic state is referred to as somnambulistic amnesic by Dr. Cook because the hypnotic subject was unaware of the missing time and unknowing of his other life, the time he spent under hypnosis. Estabrooks publicly and privately promoted the use of hypnoprogram spies by both the military and police in peacetime. He suggested that police agents could gather information from the criminal class. Quote, if allowed a free hand, the authorities could proceed to plant such prepared subjects, always with the idea of obtaining information which might sooner or later be of real use to the police. Estabrooks also suggested the creation of hypnoprogram messengers to convey secret information. He called for hypnotic conditioning in individuals who risk capture, such as Air Force pilots, to reinforce resistance against enemy interrogation and brainwashing. He also experimented with murder caused by indirect suggestion. During World War II, Estabrooks claimed to have used hypnosis to create an unwitting courier. U.S. soldiers were hypnotized and a second shell personality was created and given a detailed message to repeat to a contact. The soldier reported to the contact, was hypnotized again, and gave the secret message. The couriers were unaware of their mission and could not knowingly divulge the contents. Esther Brooks stated that this and other mind control programs were operational during the Second World War. He envisioned an elaborate infiltration operation of a foreign government targeting key individuals who could control the course of events in that nation. Mind control victims could be placed in key positions and could be controlled without their being aware. Assassins who were programmed to kill would do so on demand and retain no memory of the act or the source of their motivation. This was verified by an MKUltra subproject with that put two 19-year-old girls under hypnosis, convincing one of the girls she was to wake her friend and when she did not wake, to pick up a pistol and shoot her. The girl did exactly that under hypnosis and denied the deed when she was brought out of hypnosis and told what happened. Esther Brooks described in detail how to program an unknowing hypnotic subject. He estimated that 10 hours of hypnosis would be enough to accomplish his basic intention, but he recommended a 10-month regimen for candidates who were to be both personality split and highly trained. His basic procedure in his book, Hypnotism, called for creating the unknowing hypnoprogram subject with a disguised induction, and then proceed to suggest amnesia, seal him against hypnotic competition, and the giving of a post-hypnotic suggestion for instant re-induction by Q. 1. Covertly identify a specimen of the 20% of persons who are genetic somnambulists and easily can go into an amnesic deep depth of trance, induction by a disguised method. 
two. While the subject is in trance, give a post-hypnotic suggestion for him to become deeply hypnotized again whenever the hypnotist gives a certain cue, such as tugging the left earlobe with the right hand. Also, three, give a post-hypnotic suggestion which will deny the subject any conscious knowledge of this hypnosis or any subsequent one that causes an artificial selective amnesia for all post-hypnotic events. Four, Give a post-hypnotic suggestion that nobody else can hypnotize this subject, referred to as sealing. 5. Give a suggestion under hypnosis that the subject will act in trance, just as if awake, called walking hypnosis. Estbrooks described a method for programming a double agent whose unconscious mind would be loyal to his country, but whose conscious mind would be loyal to whatever country that was being infiltrated. Quote, in his normal waking state, which we will call personality A, or PA, this individual will become a rabid communist. He will join the Communist Party, follow the party line, and make himself as objectionable as possible to the authorities in the United States. Then we will develop personality B. The second personality, the unconscious personality, is rabidly American and anti-communist. It has all the information possessed by personality A, the communist, the normal personality, whereas personality A does not have this advantage. My super spy plays his role as a communist in the waking state, aggressively, consistently, fearlessly, but his personality B is the loyal American and Personality B has all the memories of Personality A. As a loyal American, he will not hesitate to divulge these memories. The biography of the man Dr. Estabrooks described is that of Lee Harvey Oswald, a Marine with no history of political activism who became rabidly communistic in a very public way, joining the party, defecting to Moscow, agitating publicly against American tensions to destabilize Cuba. Dr. Estabrook's testimony that U.S. soldiers were used as unwitting hypnotic couriers in the 1940s and his research into assassination, as well as the MKUltra experiments on hypnotic assassination in the 1950s, are proof that political assassinations using hypnotic programming were possible. Manchurian candidate assassins are a reality. It has been proven that people can be made to do antisocial acts in a hypnotic state that they would retain no memory of in their normal conscious waking moments. It would be impossible to prove such a crime was committed unless the hypnotic subject were examined afterwards by an expert in hypnotic control. Oswald was immediately murdered by Jack Ruby. Ruby claimed he had been manipulated and that something had happened to him that he could not clearly elucidate. His claims that he was not insane were countered by the expert testimony of the examining psychiatrist for the government, Dr. Lewis West, who was deeply involved in MKUltra projects. Ruby died of a sudden onset terminal illness while in prison. Sirhan Sirhan, the assassin of Robert Kennedy, was examined by experts Drs. Martin Shore, Dr. Simpson Collis and Dr. Herbert Spiegel. They all concluded that Sirhan Sirhan had, quote, two distinct personalities, unquote. Dr. Simpson Collis examined him in San Quentin and concluded that Sirhan had multiple personality disorder and had been programmed by someone, referred to as iatrogenic or psychiatrist created multiple personality disorder. If, in fact, these political assassinations of the 1960s were carried out as a COINTELPRO MKUltra type operation, the lack of direct links to the intelligence agencies involved would make them nearly impossible to prove in a court of law. A careful examination of the circumstantial evidence may, however, lead to some conclusions in the court of public opinion. <laughs>